You got your horn section, you got your backup vocals, got your powerful singer, got your monster horns, got your rhythm section, got your big band with a big sound out of Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you the soulful, explosive splendor of Suncoast Live. Have a question or comment? Give us a call, 941-460-1530. You don't own that plane, the taxpayers do. Son, your ego is writing checks your body can't cash. I listen to sports that stimulates my afternoons with a man I can respect in the morning. All I want to do is enjoy nature and peace and quiet. Now, here's the host of Suncoast Live, Guy Wayman. All right, welcome aboard hour number two of Suncoast Live. Glad to have you with us on this Monday afternoon. And uh, we're all trying to uh, <laughs> put on a sweatshirt or take off a sweatshirt or whatever. It is quite chilly right now. I'm showing that here at the station, we have 61 degrees. That is a far cry from our average, which should be right around 70 to 73 for this time of the year. And it could get a little more chilly by the middle of the week as a big, huge vortex is coming down, as they say, the Alberta Clipper, and it's bringing down a lot of cold air. And so it will come down here, although it will warm up because we're talking Sunday's high of around 77. So we're on, this will probably be our bump of cold weather. And then uh, it'll, things will start changing around. Glad to have you with us on this day. We have a couple of uh, traffic accidents we need to uh, share with you, not because we want to, but because they are on the books, and we want you to know about what is going on to get you home safely this afternoon. All right, our fast traffic update, Cattleman Road and Center Point Drive. There is no roadblock, but a vehicle crash nonetheless. I-75 northbound, my marker 211. There's metal, that's metal, in the left lane and the center lane. So left and center, so you move off to the right lane. And that is an area just north of Fruitville Road. And so things are going to back up considerably going in that direction. Well, every Monday, as we do, we bring in Mr. Tony Cotillo of the Heat Ray Show, Philly Influencer, and Fantasy Sports Addiction. How are you doing today, Tony? I'm wonderful. How are you doing today, guy? I am doing fine. Touch football was really such a bore yesterday. <laughs> you don't like the Pro Bowl, huh? No, I think the Pro Bowl's outlived itself, number one. Number two, if you're going to play football, play football. Let's not play sissy ball. Yeah, that's true. It's, you know, there's a lot of... A lot of high value guys out there that are just trying not to get hurt. So, well, I understand I, that. Then, 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 don't have a game like that. If you're going to be playing football, play football. Listen, I completely agree. I, I, we've been talking about this for a couple of years. I think the NFL needs to do something different. I'm not sure what it is. Do something different, but they're you know, afraid. It, it, they're afraid to do it. it. I don't know why. You could still keep the same, you know, the same week vacation away. You could still keep the same concept, but you you could do something different from a game. You could definitely do something. I've, I've actually heard that you take the person or the team, rather, who lost in the AFC and the person who lost in the NFC conference playoff game. So this year it would be Kansas City and it would be New Orleans, and they're the ones who play this week. Ah, you know, that's, that's a good idea. I think uh, we know the New Orleans Saints people would have would be happy with that kind of turnout. So it's a consolation game. So in other words, you still get one more game. You give them some extra bucks, and so they're they're playing for something there. And it would be still you get to see two quality teams play, and they actually are playing for a game. You have to put some something out there so they actually play football. So it's not this touch. It's terrible. Uh, there's a there's a lot of other factors too. I mean, it's in between. The week of the Super Bowl, so uh, you know, obviously, you know, players from Super Bowl team, and, you know, they're not going to be involved in a game. Yeah, but you have had, it on the same field as the Super Bowl. Nah, that's true. But you had, you, you, it, it's hard. Well, sure, there, it's difficult. So many, there, well, there's so many stipulations that come into fray. I mean, it, it's always been a lackluster performance, obviously, because the injury rate is so high in football. You know, it's different in hockey. It's different in baseball. It's different in basketball. So, I mean, you know, with a football game, you know, anything could happen. You, if you put, uh, all right, let, let's, uh, let's play this thing out. If you had sure. uh, Kansas City and if you had the New Orleans Saints 
and they were playing yesterday in Atlanta, Mercedes-Benz Stadium. Number one, you have all of the media already there. That would, that would start Super Bowl week. So that kicks off Super Bowl week with these guys, and then the guys that get a two-week off, then they are the Super Bowl game the following Sunday. So then, then you have an eight-day celebration from a Sunday to a Sunday. All the media is already there, um, and so it's not like you have to go to another place where the media is... Uh, you know, you're forcing them to be. Where do we Where do we have the Pro Bowl? Then you have another venue you have to get it. This way it really pumps in a lot. I, I'm just throwing it out there. No, I actually like the idea. And, and to one-up it a little bit, how about we say whoever the winner is gets the open Thursday night beginning of the season against the Super Bowl champion. Now, now, now that is something that I really did like. That that sounds really good. That's that's a good idea. So in other words, the winner of that yeah. game, and you don't call it the yep. Pro Bowl, you don't call it the Consolation <laughs> Bowl, you don't call it the Participation Bowl, but you have to come up with some kind of a name for this. But then they're actually playing for something, and and you're going to give them a chunk of cash here. Yeah, and then and then after the Super Bowl. The week after the Super Bowl, you still do something in Honolulu, but just do a skills competition, a friendly skills thing. You know, strongest man, you know, strongest player, best arm, best speed, best accuracy, you know, best, longest kick, stuff like that. And I think everybody would catch on. I really do. Well, that's where ABC, years ago, they had the sports all-stars. Remember that? Because they had to do something after the Super Bowl to to kind of, number one, they needed programming. And so let's come up with something because we need to have some programming here. But that's what they did. They invited a lot of these guys who have those skills. No, absolutely. It's a great concept. And why not bring it back? I mean, I, I think... Everything that me and you were talking about seems like common sense, but for some reason, uh, you know, the, the, the NFL prestige or the NFL gold standard probably won't think as much. Well, and the very same thing that stopped them from changing that non-call to a call, it's called ego, is the very same thing that will prevent this from happening because they don't want to, um, to say, well, you know, we've got to change something. So, uh, you know what, you, you better start changing it because the young people are, are going to turn off from this thing. Okay, they got some autographs and all, but it, it's not football. I hear you. They definitely need a change, but but listen, unfortunately though, the NFL isn't looking at this as a ratings thing. So, you know, it's different. It's different from baseball with the you know the MLB purists who who have been watching this year in and year out. Uh, you know, the the Pro Bowl has never been a highly televised contest. So I don't think they're playing against ratings. Uh, this is basically money. It's about what you pay these players in order to go out there. So, you know, I, I honestly think they have no initiative. And they have no no agenda for them to actually want to change it. I really don't. Is this because it's all part of their CBA? Absolutely, I would I would definitely think so. And so then they're going to say, okay, all these other people that played in the in the Pro Bowl years ago, and I've got ten Pro Bowl appearances and everything. Are they afraid it's going to diminish that? There you go. No, no, I don't. I don't think so at all. I think there's there's definitely a way you can lump it all in together. And and listen, they have people that are. You know, highly more you know football guys than I am. So I really think that they could figure that out, make everybody happy. I mean, listen, half the players decline the invitation anyway. You know, what I mean, it's not like it's not like everybody's jumping to go to the Pro Bowl. I mean, half of these NFL players themselves don't want to go. So you know, yeah. So you you definitely have something here in order to get some opinions to try to make a change. No doubt about it. Uh, you can hear the same discussion uh, with Tony Cotillo on, uh, on on his podcast. Uh, where where's it being played at? Uh, you can, you can check it out on the YouTube page at the Heat Ratio. You go to the the Heat Ratio on YouTube, and we have this midweek the same discussion. You can listen to as much as you want. Yeah, and so then you and so if, in as well. what? and leave your comments, and we can get back to you too. Yeah. So if if you you think we said something, or you, if you wanted to know a little bit more, then you can actually listen to it, and then uh, what you can actually type in a comment. Absolutely. And then, and then I'll be right there to respond. And so you guys are literally full of crap. Is that what you get? <laughs> <laughs> it depends on who's deciding that. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, what did you make out of the weekend? Uh, you know, the Pro Bowl was so bad 
that I actually turned over to the Olympic Channel and I watched live luge and I watched live ski jumping. Hey, there's nothing wrong with that. I I, I, I was actually waiting for the prop bets to come out for the Super Bowl. I was looking at you know some historical data, looking at the coach versus coach. So I just kind of studied a little more up on the Super Bowl instead of watching the Pro Bowl. All right, we're coming up to the Super Bowl on Sunday. Tonight's media night at, in Atlanta. Uh, will Coach Belichick go down as the best coach uh, ever to have coached this game? I, I personally think he goes down as the GOAT already. I think it doesn't even matter what he does in this game. I think he's still the bet that the greatest coach of all time. And the thing uh, is, I he never played football. Yeah, it, it's amazing the, the backstory of this guy. He, he's a brilliant mind. He, you know, he's an NF, not NFL dinosaur, but you know, he is an NFL veteran of scheme. He really is. And, and the reason why I say that is that is his main focus every year. It's all about scheme with Bill Belichick. He did it with the Giants when he was a coordinator under Bill Parcells. Mm-hmm. He did it with the Jets. Did it with the Browns. And, and he, he came full circle when he, we came to New England Patriots. So no matter what happens this weekend, I still feel Bill Belichick is the greatest of all time. I heard that when people walk in the building, in other words, into the uh, organization there of the Patriots, they immediately feel what's going on there. And even if you're... You know, you might not be the number one draft pick uh, entering that into that building. You still up your game, and you know what's expected of you because Belichick gives you what you, uh, what's expected, and Kraft has given him that authority. Now you're right. Hey, listen, this, this is a this is a culture. And it's a culture that's built from day one. It's a culture where you know you don't you, you don't rule with an iron fist. It's basically that what you just said. It's the expectation of every player, and you know that going into it. You know why the rookies know that is because the rookies are reading about it while they're in college. The rookies are watching the play out on SportsCenter. They're playing out in the newspapers, on social media. They already know what to expect if they're going to be a drafted member of the New England Patriots. So listen, this is all built by Bill Belichick. And you said Robert Kraft, another, another football veteran, another guy as an owner who's given Bill Belichick Everything he needs, he's instilled everything in a Bill Belichick to make football decisions. And I'll tell you what, he, he definitely definitely has to be satisfied with the decisions that have been made up at this point. People say, well, the kids don't want to work. I say that's nonsense because uh, the young people in high school, they want to play for Nick Saban in Alabama. They want to go to Ohio State and play. They want to go to, like, LSU. They want to go to the, um, uh, Dabo Sweeney's group. They want to play in a an organization that does require discipline because they want to win. And then at the same token, they want to play for an organization like the New England Patriots because they are winners. Same thing's happening now with New Orleans. The same thing did happen under Bill Walsh when it was the San Francisco 49ers. Absolutely. I mean, listen, it's all about results, right? You know, and, and that's the thing. You ask, how can I get my players to perform? How can I get my players to buy into this culture? Show them results. And, and, and at the end of the day, the, the Lombardi trophies are there. The rings are there. The posters are there. The, you know, the, the winning efficiency. Yeah, everything is there. So as long as you can give a grown man or a, you know, or a rookie for that matter, it doesn't matter. As long as you can give a human being a result based on what you're preaching, they're going to buy in, especially if it's positive. You know, that's the same thing with businesses, though, too. The businesses that demand uh, a discipline from their employees and who, I mean, they need to have a, a, the right structure because some of these businesses don't. But, uh, but then those are the ones that are winners, and they are constantly at the top of the food chain. That's why. That's why they call the New England Patriots the gold standard. They're the gold standard of the NFL, which is big business. And, listen, no matter what you want to say, you say they're cheaters. You say they don't play fair. No matter what you want to say, they win. And at the end of the day, they're successful in the, one of the biggest, most successful businesses of the world, and that's the NFL. Yeah, what is it, $12, 14000000000 billion this year? Oh, it, it, it's definitely more money than I'll ever see in my lifetime. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't that the truth? All right. Uh, okay, Super Bowl is coming up. Uh, yeah. And uh, 
Boy, oh boy, the line was a, a perfect even pick em game, but now it's kind of switched and it's kind of favoring New England Patriots. What's going to happen? Uh, you know, uh, I think everybody, you know, everybody was worried about the storyline. You know, what the storyline was going to be for this game. I mean, the storyline is simple. Bill Belichick wins. He's the oldest coach to ever win a Super Bowl. If, if Sean McVay wins, he's the youngest coach to ever win a Super Bowl. Jared Goff versus Tom Brady. I mean, everything, it's the, the new school against the old school. But one matchup I think everybody's forgetting. It's that, that defensive coordinator that's been around as long as Bill Belichick, who does it every year, no matter where he's at, and that's Wade Phillips. So you have Wade Phillips, okay, out there with the Rams going up against Scott McDaniels of the New England Patriots. So I think it's going to be the defense of the Rams against the offense, obviously, of the Patriots. And if anybody knows what New England does better than Wade Phillips, he, he could definitely, definitely present a scheme to make Tom Brady think. I think it was the Cowboys who played the Rams before New England. I mean, before uh, uh, New Orleans. Am I correct? Yes. Okay. In that game, you saw what Wade Phillips brought to the table with the defense. Because on that game, yep. I think it was the best defensive game the Rams played all year. I mean, listen. It, you know, it's, it, it's easy for us to say, "Hey, well, you know, he has Aaron Donald, and Dominican Sue. He has Michael Brockers." He has Dante Fowler. He has these guys, Corey Littleton. He has these mm. guys that have really stepped up. But this guy has done it everywhere. He's done it in Houston. He's done it in Denver. He's done it in Dallas. He's doing it. The I mean, this guy is unbelievable. He will go down as a Hall of Fame defensive coordinator, no doubt. You know, it's the same type of thing with the offensive guys. If you have the right coaching to get you there, yep. they actually catch the ball. They can go to another team, and that same player will not catch the ball. And, and they say, well, what's wrong with this guy? And I would dare say it's the expectation, the way that they coach, starting from the fundamentals on up. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, and, and the funny thing is, he, you know, he's had a couple stints as, as a head coach. But some guys are just better suited to be coordinators. It's just something in their blood. They're better suited to build up that scheme on a weekly basis to outlast the other team. And I personally think that's the way Phillips is. And not to short Josh McDaniels, because Josh McDaniels is going to have a brilliant game plan, I'm sure of it, for the New England Patriots. But I think the inside, the underlining matchup here is not Bill against Sean. I think it's Wade against Josh. And I think that'll be the defining moment of who wins this game. Fantastic. I, I want to thank you so much for being a regular contributor each and every Monday. And uh, who? so, do you have an, a pick? Uh, you know, I can't go against greatness. i got to go with the Patriots. I, I take the Patriots uh, 31-21. I'm kind of leaning there, but I'm going to give my pick on Thursday. Sounds good. Uh, well, when we talk this time next week, we'll already have a champion crown. That's right. And we'll all have pizzas in our belly. <laughs> Absolutely. Hey, thanks so much, Tony. Have a good week, guys. All right. We'll be right back ourselves. From the flagship station in Southwest Florida, your sports anchors here. Coach Mark.